Most of us literally adore our own, physically or in memory, for the sacrifices, the laughter, joy, and tears, the stern and soft looks, the gentle admonitions and embraces of loving forgiveness. Since we are all family members in the body of Christ, why shouldn't we in the Christian church, as taught by the Holy Spirit, delegate some of that same honor and love to the mother of Jesus? For the changing of his crude diapers, the baths, and the combing his hair cooking, sweeping wood carvings off the floor, for the bandaging cuts from awns and saws, for soothing skin knees and wiping his tears. We tend to forget these little things. And as Mary, daughter of Anne, daughter of Joachim, is the mother of Christ, she then by extension is also the mother of the entire human family. 
God included Mary early in his earthly plans. In Genesis, we see our collective ancestors chastised. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Genesis 3.13. Pride. This is believed to be the original sin which caused them to disobey God. Originally, the passage referred to Eve as woman, with the you being the snake Satan personified. Later, the church applied the section to Mary, foreshadowing her history role. The ancients often used such literary symbolism to make the truth more readily understood. Christ, the offspring or seed of Mary through the Holy Spirit, would crush the power of evil and bring overwhelming grace. During the Judean king Ahaz's alliance with Assyria, the prophet Isaiah predicted Mary's coming role. The virgin shall be with child and, and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us, Isaiah 7.14. Micah from the foothills of Moroseth and a contemporary of Isaiah concurred, Micah 5, 2, and 3. Matthew the Apostle so confirmed their prediction seven and a half centuries later, Matthew 1, 22, 23. As foretold, in the supreme goodness and wisdom to effect the redemption of the world, when the fullness of time came, God sent his Son, born of woman, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And he shall be born in a cave, in a manger. shall be your God, and ye shall be his people. This, my beloved Son. The incarnation and birth of Christ. Western and much Eastern world history is centered on this single event. He for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit from the Virgin Mary. We count time from it, though we're off by a few years. Mary accepted her role in history when she predicted all generations shall call me blessed, because he that is mighty hath done great things to me. Luke 1, 48. As the mother of God, through his gift of sublime grace, Mary far surpassed all heavenly and earthly creatures. Even the archangel Gabriel acknowledged her as full of grace. Luke 1, 28. As Luke tells us, And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and therefore the Holy One to be born shall be called the Son of God. Luke 1, 35. Of course, many who are skeptical will not be able to understand. It is not given to all to know. But we of black roots have long endured the tradition of matriarchy. We know and recognize the grace and power of womanhood. Historically, black woman more or less controls and rules her earthly family. The right of legacy in property and authority, especially in Africa, Egypt, passed, and in many areas still does, through women, not men. Mary herself was, after all, with Joseph, a member of that house of David. It has been previously established that that family had African-Egyptian roots. And during the period of Mary's engagement to Joseph, Jews were restricted to marrying within their own tribe. Interestingly, Everything in Israel's culture at the time stemmed from those surrounding. Mary's ancestors were Essenes, a quite ascetic, that means strict, Jewish sect which tribally married among themselves. Many Essenes lived in Africa, Egypt. Others lived nearby in the desert around Mount Horeb, a place unknown to us now, but thought to be in the Sinai Peninsula. Mary's mother was named Dan, her father, Joachim. Anne's grandfather, before his marriage, was called Stellanus. But by his wife, and in consideration of her dowry, he received the name Girasha, or Sarziri. Anne's grandmother was of the Mari in the desert. Her name was Moruni, or Imurun, that is, noble mother. Ismeria, the second daughter of Stellanus, and Imurun married Eliod of the tribe of Levi. These were Anne's parents. About 18 months after her mother Ismeria died, Anne, then in the 19th year, married Heli, or Joachim, of the house of David, for Mary was to belong to the house of David.
This she did in obedience to the spiritual direction of the prophet on account of the approach of the Savior's advent. Joaquin was poor and a relative of St. Joseph, Jesus' foster father. Joseph's grandfather, Nathan, descended from David through Solomon, had two sons, Joseph and Jacob. The latter was Joseph's father. When Nathan died, his widow married a second husband named Levi, descendant of David through Nathan. The psychic Marco de Jesus de Agreda said of Joseph, the appointed day having arrived, all the young men of the family of David assembled together, and Joseph, whose birthplace was Nazareth, yet who had at that time dwelt in Jerusalem, was among the number. He was 33 years old, of comely figure, and pleasing in appearance. At the age of 12, he had made a vow of chastity. He was related to Mary in the third degree. Revelations and traditions abound regarding Mary and Joseph. Still much remains unknown. And though you are not required to believe, some evidence exists. Jesus once said, Many mysteries pertaining to my mother are still hidden, especially the interior secrets of her life, and these I wish now to make known. I desire to make known to mortals how much her intercession is worth. If men would now seek to please me by reverencing, believing, and studying the wonders which are intimately connected with this mother of piety, and if they would all begin to solicit her intercession from their whole heart, the world would find some relief. So the piety and honor shown to the Blessed Virgin Mary should not be too puzzling to us. When you wanted or needed something as a child, more often than not, you went to your mother. When you were about to be punished for something you did as a child, sometimes only your mother would be able to restrain your father. Here on earth and in heaven, Mary still serves both functions, fulfilling earthly and spiritual needs. In terms of Mary's husband, Joseph, there is a prayer quite old, dating from 50 A.D. It is said that whoever shall read this prayer, or hear it, or keep it about themselves, shall never die a sudden death, or be drowned, or take poison, or shall poison have effect on them. Neither shall they fall into the hands of the enemy, or be burned in any fire, or shall be overpowered in battle. It is said, for nine consecutive mornings, or days, or nights. For whatever you want, provided it is for the good of your soul, and not against God's will. It has never been known to fail. So be sure you really want what you ask. O Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so prompt before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O Saint Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O Saint Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. Saint Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Here, make your request. Another unfailing prayer. Saint Joseph, spouse of Mary, be mindful of me. Pray for me, watch over me. Garden of the paradise of the new Adam, provide for my temporal wants. Faithful guardian of the most precious of all treasures, I beseech thee to bring this matter to a happy end if it be for the glory of God and the good of my soul. Of course, you are not mandated to believe. Until next time.